webinar, My Case Needs a Life Care Plan, Now What? This webinar is hosted by Medical and Life Care Consulting Services, a case management and nurse consulting firm headquartered in Massachusetts. We're excited that you've joined us for this presentation. My name is Gigi Liggins, and I'm the moderator for today's webinar. This webinar is anticipated to run about 20 minutes with an additional 10 minutes provided for questions and answers. Participant audio will be on mute throughout the duration of the webinar, and we ask that questions are submitted using the question and answer or chat feature within the Zoom webinar dashboard. Post-webinar, we will provide information on how you can access this content uh, on on-demand playback, in addition to providing a link for a short survey. Again, we're excited to host today's webinar and look forward to an opportunity to work with you. Let's get started. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about what to look for in your nurse life care planner, how to understand your case and some things to think about, identifying the right solutions for your case, the roles and responsibilities of the nurse life care planner, getting started and what to expect, and then we'll open it up for questions. Today's webinar presenter is Cynthia Borbeau. She is president and founder of Medical and Life Care Consulting Services and has worked as a Massachusetts registered nurse, certified rehabilitation nurse, certified nurse case manager, and certified nurse life care planner for over three decades. Uh, she founded MLCC in 2001 which provides life care planning, medical care set-aside, legal nurse consulting, and more throughout the United States and internationally. MLCC also provides case management services throughout the Northeast region of the United States and a wide range of care consultation for catastrophic injuries. Cynthia is a member of the Association of Rehabilitation Nurses, the American Association of Nurse Life Care Planners, the International Association of Rehab Partners, and the Case Management Society of America. She is also a board member of the Certified Nurse Life Care Planner Certification Board. All right, Cynthia, I'm gonna pass it off to you. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this afternoon. So what to look for in a life care planner really is the first question. There are all different types of life care planners uh, from different specialties, but I feel that nurses are uniquely positioned to complete life care plans as we do life care plans daily in our nursing process. Uh, the skills and the steps needed to complete a life, life care plan is detailed in our nursing process. So what to look for in a nurse life care plan? Experience, organizational capacity, and certification are the three areas that um, I feel are very important. So experience is the nurse life care planners medical and rehabilitation experience. Uh, there are all different types of uh, practices for life care planning. There's individual life care planners who are sole proprietors and there are life care planners that work in insurance companies and there are life care planners that work for firms. So we are a group of nurse life care planners that work together at my practice and uh, I think it's important in that situation that you have established and experienced planners that do a standardized methodology of life care planning and are timely and can produce the product when you need it. Uh, certification is very important. It's the foundational standard and it outlines the methodology for the practice of nurse life care planning. Uh, and I can't stress the importance enough in that. So certification. So certification is a formal recognition of that nurse's knowledge, experience, and skills uh, within that specific nursing specialty. And it reflects a more professional practice standard. It validates our knowledge and it reflects achievement of proficiency beyond basic licensure. So it confirms our experience when you see CNLCP after that nurse's name, 
and it also validates, validates the fact that continuing education has to continue throughout their practice. So experience. Experience is measured in different ways. So in regards to rehabilitation experience, you want to make sure that your client's specific diagnosis, prognosis, and rehabilitation treatment are things that your nurse life care planner has applied experience in. Uh, it is key. It's an applied and practical understanding of the long-term needs of the client to develop an accurate and evidence-based life care plan. Uh, requesting that nurses CV and looking to see where they've worked in the past and what their practice has entailed. You want to make sure that they have the experience working with patients who have similar diagnoses, comparable symptoms, and rehabilitation needs. So in other words, not every, uh, every nurse life care planner, every life care planner is not going to know every diagnosis or have worked with every diagnosis that are out there because there are multitudes of diagnoses. However, every diagnosis pre um, presents with certain symptoms and resulting impairments or, and so because of that, um, nurses have experience in those specific areas. So in other words, if you have respiratory uh, problems uh, that are identified as one of your uh, main symptoms that were affected, you want to make sure that you have a nurse who understands uh, you know, respiratory complications and the treatments necessary for them. Expert witness. So an expert witness has a high quality written and oral testimony along with a professional demeanor and communication skills. And these are vital for your nurse life care planner. Whether your case goes to trial or not, working with a planner who's experienced as an expert witness can significantly impact your case outcome and how that jury looks at that case. So organizational capacity has to deal with, again, is it a sole proprietor or it is a firm that has multiple life care planners available to work on it. So preparation of your case is methodical and thoughtful and the process should be unchanged from case to case or patient to patient. Um, with multiple nurse life care planners and additional administrative staff, it just makes things more efficient. Uh, with multiple nurse life care plans, for example, in my practice, uh, we have uh, a process where we do peer review on each other's life care plans before we, they go out the door. So we are doubly assured that the uh, plan that's been put in place is the most effective one that we can do for that patient. Uh, also, it, I've been doing this for many years now, and Life care planners are usually people who are very experienced in their practice and they've been around for many years. So as the life care planners are aging, there's been situations that have come up where something happens and that life care planner is not able to present the life care plan that's already been submitted to court. So it's kind of a unique perspective to be able to have a backup nurse life care planner that has already opined on the case and participated in preparation and in review of that life care plan to be able to step in. An organization also allows you to reduce inefficiencies. We get referrals all the time that we get cases in where multitude of experts have summarized the medical records. Well, no expert can use another person's summary of medical records. They have to review the case on their own. However, as a lawyer, uh, attorney preparing your case, you very often have office staff that are available to be able to do summaries. And so you oftentimes present those summaries to us. It would be more efficient for us to receive those records, complete the medical chronology that is required for the life care plan, and then give that information back to you. It would save your team time, and it would decrease costs and be more efficient. Sometimes there are firms that are sole proprietors, sole practitioners in that firm, and so they don't have the staff available, so they find that this service is beneficial in helping them organize their case. 
Um, and you want to make sure that your team has the resources and capacity to handle all situations. So a firm would have that ability to handle cases uh, in a more timely manner, uh, and situations occur when you need a rapid response. Those aren't the best situations, but they, a firm would give you more ability to do that. So understanding the case. So you have a case, now what do you do? So the first process is to call your life care planner and confirm that there's no conflict of interest. We want to hear a uh, brief explanation of what the case is about, so if it's a pediatric or a neonatal case or if it's an adult case. And then uh, we want to find out who the opposing counsel is so that we can make sure that there's no conflict. Uh, we, we collect contact, uh, the contact information immediately so that we can get this information and also identify what product you're going to need or you're going to want. Um, our referral process includes that information. So once we've confirmed that there's no conflict of interest, then we want to uh, speak with the attorney. Uh, the nurse would speak with the attorney regarding the specific case, the diagnosis, the anticipated prognosis, and their rehab needs. So the basis of all our opinions starts with an understanding of the injury and treatment to date. And then we go on to do a review of the medical records. So a big question that happens with every referral is uh, what product do I need? Um, sometimes attorneys call and they're not sure that, they're not even aware that there are other products available out there. So I wanted to review some of the potential products that are available. So one of them is a focus estimate. This focus estimate can be on a specific item. So in other words, if an attorney or an attorney group needed to know how much a total knee replacement costs or how much revision of a back lip and pump or a spinal cord stimulator costs, we would be able to produce and get that information for you. Uh, and that would be a pretty quick process. Another thing that's not on this form is we do provide verbal opinions. So we will take medical records, review them. We don't produce any sort of written paperwork, but um, we would review the records and give, give a verbal opinion about what the um, actual, uh, our opinion is regarding what that patient will need. The next format is the medical cost projection. And these types of projections are often done for insurance companies or just for information for attorneys. It's not to be used in court. And what we do is do a review and brief summary of the patient's injury and treatment to date by reviewing two years of medical records, two years of pharmacy records, and payment records. And then we just identify the items that are going to be needed to treat that patient and we get one associated cost. Uh, this is a very short, focused report, and it does not go to court at all. The next, pro two, proce the next two products are um, more involved. So a life care plan projection is the next level of report. Um, this also does not go to court, but it is the report closest to a life care plan. Uh, in it, we complete a chronological review and summary of all medical records from date of injury and illness to present. It is the same chronological review that we would include in a comprehensive life care plan. We then do an itemized treatment recommendation, uh, which includes goods and services needed throughout that patient's le uh, lifetime with the rationale and the cost research, but we only do research on one cost. So this is a very short report. So if you have a case that comes in that you think you're going to mediate and you don't think you're going to go to trial but you're not sure, this would be the type of project that you would want because we've developed a computer program where we can just, if, if you have a mediation and the issue does not get resolved and you now need to go to trial, then we would have to follow the methodology of life care planning, which would be to complete three costs and give our rationale in the life care plan. So we would need to complete a comprehensive life care plan at that time. This computer program allows us to switch that product from a projection to a life care plan and just add the information that is needed, the two additional costs and the summary of the patient's status by system, okay? So 
it cuts down on repetitive work, it cuts down on the cost long term. The next project is a comprehensive life care plan, and this is the type of plan that we probably get the most calls for. It's a, um, we start out by doing a chron the chronological review and summary of all medical records from date of injury to present. We review everything that addresses this, so that could be payment records, reading depositions or arbitrations or interrogatories, looking at day in the life videos, looking at photos, anything that gives us information about the patient's status. We then outline a progression of the patient's medical status in each specific system area, so cognitive, oral motor control, communication, all of these different areas from date of injury to maximum medical improvement or at the time of the report. From that, we then determine what the itemized treatment recommendations are, what goods and services are, both medical and non-medical, that are needed throughout that lifetime, and then we do three costs for each item and do an average, and we have to do research to obtain that. Um, the goal of this life care plan for any life care planner is for the patient really to be able to use this plan. And I've had several family members contacting us other after, uh, after the process has been completed and ask specific information um, and direction on how to use the plan and where, where they can get this. So we would then explain it to them so that they would know how to access, access those resources. In that plan, we also do communication with various healthcare providers and experts and do on-site evaluations of patients, interview of family and friends uh, when allowed. The last product that's av available is a Medicare set-aside allocation. And we do completion of MSA reports through review of two years of medical records, pharmacy records, and payment records, and then identify which items would be covered under Medicare and what their costs would be. We also submit MSA reports and do follow-up questions that often occur with submitting an MSA report. Next slide, okay. So the roles and responsibilities of your nurse life care planner are to complete the plan. And included in that is review of the medical records and all those documents that I previously just listed out. We outlined a patient's course of illness, injury, and treatment to date, and the information that we've gathered. We evaluate all aspects of the patient's health, so it's a holistic approach to the entire patient with an outline of the patient's present status. And then the present and anticipated needs that are outlined include, but these are just some of them, projected evaluations needed, projected therapeutic modalities, future medical care, doctor's, doctor's appointments, medication, durable medical equipment and supplies, diagnostic testing, prosthetics and orthotics, aids for communication and speaking, surgical and medical procedures, transportation, architectural changes that could be needed to a patient's home or apartment, facility care, home care needs, home maintenance needs, and the list goes on, whatever that patient needs. Uh, so costs are obtained for all these identified um, items through research of suppliers, and then we use an average cost for each item. So what to expect um, when you select your nurse life care planner? So setting case expectations is important. So that first phone call when you're speaking with the nurse life care planner, uh, you identify what kind of product and we help you with that. And then when is it needed? Because setting that goal and that deadline is very important. We send out rate sheets and contracts. And then sharing of the medical records and any personal in, uh, information is done securely and it can be done through Dropbox or something like that um, service. Uh, we have encrypted also email and some attorneys prefer sending things on a disk or um, also using a zip drive. Once all the information is reviewed, we do a summary of it and right away we need to set up uh, a schedule to review the plan or product prior to the due date and then delivering the product on the due date is usually by 
encrypted email um, with a locked PDF and then a mailed copy. So getting started with MLCC is everything that we just talked about. Remember that um, we're happy to talk about cases at any time and there's no charge for that. We're happy to answer questions or concerns and help you determine what product you need. So obviously you want to do the best by your case, but you have to do it cost effective from both sides. And so we try very hard to do that. Our services, again, include uh, focused estimates of care. We can give verbal opinions, medical chronologies, medical cost projections, life care plan projections, comprehensive life care plans, Medicare set-aside allocations, and legal nurse consulting opinions. Thank you so much, uh, Cynthia, for your presentation today. We're going to transition into a Q&A segment. So we'll give folks a little bit of time to submit their questions and then um, I will share them with you. All right, uh, first question. Uh, what would be the benefit of choosing a life care plan projection versus a medical cost projection? So a medical cost projection is really just uh, a very short report. Um, it's very static. Uh, and it's used to set reserves. Uh, it can also be to use, be used in mediation, but if there's any chance that a case needs to go to trial, then it cannot be used and a full life care plan would have to be done at that point with a summary of medical records. Uh, so that would be an additional cost. By using a life care plan, half the work is, you know, a third, uh, yeah, about half of the work is completed already for the life care plan, and we just have to add the items, the additional items that are needed. Probably Great. half to two things. <laughs> Got it, makes sense. Uh, next question, can a life care plan projection be used in court? Uh, uh, no, I do not uh, take life care plan projections to court because they don't follow the methodology that is required for life care planning. So if you had an opposing counsel ha present a life care plan, uh, my life care plan projection would be thrown out of court because it did not follow the methodology. It didn't meet the standards. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that MLCC provides a verbal opinion. Can you just explain the process for getting started on a verbal opinion? So oftentimes uh, attorneys will call and ask for a review of a medical, uh, medical record or review of actually even a few medical records and maybe a, a life care plan that was submitted. So we have to go through the same process of making sure that there are no conflicts and once we do that, it's just a matter of reading the records and then having a phone conversation regarding our evaluation of that plan or those medical records. It usually can be done fairly quickly in a quick turnaround. Um, and then if any additional services are needed, they would identify them at that time. Thank you. Uh, and then we have one more question. I think this is a follow-up from where you mentioned that MLCC has the ability to do peer reviews. Um, can you just share the benefit of a peer review when it comes to a, a life care plan? Yeah, every uh, life care planner, you know, uh, in our practice is an expert witness. So having uh, another peer look at it to make sure that we are following the standards of care and uh, and that we are being as thorough uh, as we can be for that patient, uh, for that claimant, uh, and that we've addressed everything, I feel is very important. We take our responsibility of identifying the correct costs and the correct items very seriously. So that just gives us one more layer of uh, evaluation in the process. Thanks, thanks for that answer. All right, we'll give it about 10 seconds to see if any other questions come through. All 
All right, it looks like we're done. Again, thank you for joining this webinar, uh, My Case Needs a Life Care Plan, Now What? with um, hosted by Medical and Life Care Consulting. Please remember that case consultations are free and we welcome you to give us a call or send us an email at any time. Uh, you can access our contact information here or by visiting us online at www.medicalandlifecareconsulting.com. Our services include a focused estimate of care, verbal consultation, medical chronologies, medical cost projections, life care plan projections, comprehensive life care plans, Medicare set-aside allocations, and legal nurse consulting. Thank you again for your participation. We look forward to working with you.